welcome, 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 welcome to this episode of, um, what are we calling this? What are we calling this one? How about, uh, we will call this the continuation Cricket, crickets and locusts. Okay, this video was a continuation to possibly the last video I posted. I don't know when I'll get to post this, but it was in response because Ralphie had prayed and it was during the solar eclipse time frame and he prayed a few days before that that God would show us if he wanted us to fast or not and in the last video i basically was explaining how god i truly believe confirmed that to me that that's a yes and normally i wouldn't share if we're fasting or praying like that unless we we're i don't know trying to ask people we did once i think a long time ago when he was working on quantum if anyone wanted to join us in fasting and praying for that project which is still i believe god paused for a very important reason but that's another rabbit trail for another time i should open again with some prayer father in heaven just thank you lord jesus thank you for your signs and your seasons lord thank you jesus for your goodness that you're wishing none to perish but you wish that all will come to saving faith in you and true repentance and be delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light your glorious light lord god and i just pray that you would speak to our hearts prepare our hearts to receive truth and that you would guide this conversation lord help me because i am miss scatterbrain and rachel rabbit trails i just pray lord that you would be with me holy spirit help me to only say and share whatever it is you're putting on my heart that you want me to say bless the dear people bless the brothers and sisters in the lord our family lord and those yet to be our family in you i just thank you for them in advance lord god i know you're doing a new thing and i just praise you lord god you are so kind you're so awesome you're so good I thank you for our puppies. I thank you for this home. I thank you for food in the fridge. I thank you for our loved ones. I thank you for all our family, even family that doesn't know you, Lord God, that we can pray for them. We can intercede for them. Someone interceded for us, Lord, for sure, when we didn't know you. And that's so beautiful, Lord God. It's always like this baton going forward, that there's always someone, it seems, absolutely like there's this beautiful golden spider web of all these lives connected praying for each other and on and on and on love begets love okay so praise you lord we just pray that you meet with us and speak to our hearts in jesus mighty name amen okay so let's go back my crazy list cray cray as Ralphie says cray cray up in his nay nay okay our question are crickets part oh what is the context of this video Ralphie's always like context Rachel context okay the context of this video this channel is I don't know I'm just going with the flow of the Holy Spirit, wherever he takes me, y'all. This channel is um, dedicated to the Lord and Mama because God gave me my mom and it, she was one of the most profound influences on me, her and dad, on me becoming a Christian and giving my heart to Jesus. And I saw their love story with the Lord and this channel is it's just kind of like a diary of my family of of every aspect of like family loss miscarriage marriage our testimonies all the things god is just doing in our family and just the 
uh, other thing is the things God puts on my heart. There's certain messages I really feel that he wants me to share or talk about that are urgent. Like um, sometimes I've had dreams and I, what I will say is I, I will say, I will preface it by, I strongly feel these are things God has put on my heart. What I will also say is we shall know because if these things come to pass, then that is something from the Lord. We always have to test the spirit. Um, yeah, so the context is, I don't know, y'all, let's just see. Let's see where Holy Spirit will take us because he always takes this girl down some rabbit holes for sure. <laughs> rabbit trails, rabbit holes. <laughs> Y'all, and if you haven't noticed by this channel by now, if you're sensing my personality, I, I'm i a big kid and Ralphie is too. And you know what? I'm not ashamed of that because God, he wants us. He addresses us. He talks about, to us like he says little children. That's the thing. If you humble yourself like a little child, God will open up the mysteries of the universe to you. He will show you hidden beautiful things in his word. Things about like time travel. Things about the end of the world. Things about the new creation coming. Things about the mysteries of life. The human soul. Everything. Everything you could want to know. Because even the fact he has Solomon in the word who had everything. He was super uber rich he had countless wives he had money and palaces and everything ah and what does he say all of that is vanity right so if you're going through this life and you're coming to that same co conclusion that everything is vanity praise god if you've got there i hope you get there because that is the place you need to be for you to have true spiritual enlightenment and I'm not talking about anything new age because that's like the wrong spirit you want to be aligning yourself with the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost and be informed by him um, but if you humble yourself like a little child God will open up the mysteries of the universe to you through his word because his word will come alive to you you'll actually it's a spiritual book y'all it is a spiritual book you will be <laughs> uh, I think one of the puppies is like leaning on the door and scratching their belly you go night night babies okay but if you humble yourself like a little child because God resists the proud y'all but he gives what he gives grace to the humble he he made this living word, he made this living word, this spiritual book with hidden mysteries in it. And he will, he will unravel them. He will open them up to you. It will start to make sense. And you will be hungry for this word. It will literally, you will be hungry for it. Like your soul will be hungry. You'll want to know more. You will eat, sleep the word. When, when you give more of yourself, it's like you will get more hungry for his word. And the more it will come alive. It's so beautiful and it's so awesome. It's amazing. There is no high like the most high. Okay, so let's go to my notes. Now, these aren't my notes for the, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that video on the labyrinth y'all stay tuned it's still coming it's still in the works it's so amazing the amazing rabbit trails and rabbit holes and <laughs> things i downloads i truly truly believe god was giving to me and it was something that was on my heart from years ago like seeing labyrinth and also pilgrim's progress and anyways just stay tuned for that but as far as this goes we're going to go back to my notes. My notes concerning the eclipse stuff. Eclipse 2024, but also linking into the eclipse of 2017. And also, 
there was eclipse in the 1900s and around it was in during uh, World War One time and I think there was also an eclipse connected to World War Two and Nineveh too. Okay, so these are the notes and the first thing I've written on my little notepad is are crickets part of the locust family? So if you listen to the last video, that was kind of like the question I was pondering in my heart asking the Lord, okay, if you want me to share if, about the fasting thing, because normally you keep that if you're fasting, like it says, go into your prayer closet in secret. You'll keep that on the DLO. You don't want to be flashing that around. You just want it to be something between you and the Lord. Because God is jealous for us. And he wants to know, oh, you're just doing this for me, right? You're not just doing this to get a pat on the back. Because then there's your reward. If you're just doing this alone just for me. Okay, then, you know, we can meet, we can konania, we can have some fellowship, and I can give you some spiritual downloads. I can give you something very special that I will share only with you. Okay, so my question was like, okay, Lord, if you want me to share this about fasting, which is not normally typically what you do, but maybe you want me to share it because you want others to fast so they could experience that blessing, then answer this question lord if grasshoppers are connected to or crickets connected to the family of locusts then i'll take that like a sign that you did want me to share it because lo and behold what was in my prayer closet like the morning afternoon of the solar eclipse was a cricket ish grasshopper creature thing grazing my foot, um, which never, ever, ever happens in all my years of having a prayer closet in different places of the world, too. Um, different continents, would I say? I guess so. Uh, okay, so this is the question. Are crickets part of the locust family? Drum roll. Both grasshoppers and crickets are in the order of Orthra, Orthoptera <laughs> together with locusts. So yes, they are in that family or uh, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Are crickets a part of the locust family? Both grasshoppers and crickets are in the order of Orthra... Or... <laughs> that is the hardest word. Orthoptera together with locusts. So yes. Okay. So then I felt like, okay, then God answered that question. Like, if do I share? Do I not share about that? to inspire others to contemplate if they should fast and get to experience that blessing. There's blessings in fasting. We get to grow closer to the Lord and that is always a blessing. And I'm telling you, no fast I've ever had was alike. I've And I've had so many, I believe, spiritual downloads through fasting, through God just showing me so many things things about myself, about my family, about dreams I've had, about things that he's doing in our life or wants to do. Just, they're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spiritual resources. And I hope you guys take the Lord up on that offer. Okay. Question two was, what turns a grasshopper to a locust? And if you hear little rumblings in the back, or little puppy sounds that's because that's little puppies in the background they're playing in the next room but anyways hey you guys hush hush little puppies what turns a grasshopper to a locust answer when their numbers explode following years of abnormally high rainfall they undergo a dramatic transformation, turning pink or yellow. 
becoming uh, gregarious and growing longer wings for longer distance of flight. For some reason, when I read this, I was thinking of, uh, in the last video I was reading um, that passage about the locust in Revelation. And it was just reminding me of that, about the rainfall, because it mentioned abnormally high rainfall. And then I was thinking, because I think somewhere in there it talks about the the latter rain and David Wilkie Wilk talked about that like the former rain and the two different rains like kind of connecting the rain of Pentecost the first Pentecost and that there's going to be a latter rain another pouring out of the Holy Spirit to that kind of degree those kind of miracles like for instance it was talking about like the wind rushed in, and I'll read the passages later on in here, because that is connected. Okay. Anyways. Uh, further on, I just thought that was interesting that it mentioned in the question that I looked up, just what turns a, it. I didn't go looking up this question. There was just a bunch of questions underneath it. You know from like google search and then it took me on this little journey but it started with my main question which started in my prayer closet with a grasshopper cricket creature being near my foot touching my foot which never happened so that started this whole journey and i just thought it was interesting because that other question about what turns a grasshopper to a locust was interesting because I, I was had just read in Revelation about the locusts, the locusts in Revelation, and also about the latter rain because it talks about here in in Google's answer it says when their number explodes following years of abnormal rainfall. I just thought that was interesting. Um, and okay, so the, let's keep reading. So the next question is the eighth plague locusts, Exodus 10. Answer. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and told him, and this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says How long will you refuse? Oh, my love is calling me. My love is calling me. One second. Alrighty, friends, loved ones, I'm back. Okay. <gasps> I know. <laughs> um, so, I don't know when I'm posting this, but this this is a continuation of the last video, and I'm shooting it all on the same day. So, actually, Ralphie woke up, and I just, uh, basically, I told him what happened. <laughs> That God answered his prayer. He really believed God answered his prayer. And he he felt the same way too. So now we're officially the fasting. And you hear the little puppies in the background. <laughs> they oh yeah, that's the thing Auntie Janet said when she took care of the life for the premiere. It's WrestleMania. Puppy WrestleMania. <laughs> hey, 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 don't be mean. That's enough. And Ruffy, <laughs> Ruffy gets so ticked off <laughs> as the little puppy. You be nice. You be nice. You give love. Yeah. You give love. You don't be good. Okay. Uh, I am such a scatterbrain. Onward, Christian soldier. Okay, so... I was reading, the question was, the eighth, the eighth plague, the eighth plague, locust, <laughs> hey, God, hey, 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 or as Ralphie says, hey, 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 
exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. So Moses and Aaron, this is Locust, Exodus 10. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and told him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship. Everyone highlight that. So that they may worship me. Worship. Everything goes back to worship. But if you refuse to let my people go, I will bring locusts into your territory tomorrow. They will cover the face of the land so that no one can see it. They will devour whatever is left after the hail and eat every tree that grows in your fields. Exodus 10. Okay, you guys, simmer it down. Snort, snarl, puppies. When will God pour out his spirit? Question mark. According to Joel 2, 3 to 32. Or Joel 2, 30 to 32. Answer. I will, I will show wonders in heaven and on earth. Blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on, on the name of the Lord will be saved from for on you guys stop it. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance. For on, Mount, for on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has promised. Among, this is important, among the remnants. Hey, stop it. Among the remnant called by the Lord. Joel 2, 30 to 32. Hoping that's not really registering on there. We shall see. Yes, we shall. Okay. Okay, back to this passage. I think it's very important in Joel. Okay, here we go, peoples. Here we go, peeps. Joel 2. The army of locusts. Hey, hey. Put your inside voices on. Hush, hush, hush. Sweetie Toto. This is what the Lord showed me. He was preparing swarms of locusts. Interesting. It says he was preparing swarms of locusts. Just after the king's harvest. As the late spring crop was coming up. Oh, speaking of which. You know how the world, you always hear about like the grim reaper? I just had this thought the other day. You know how Jesus says the harvest is plentiful? Plentiful, but the workers are few. And he says something like, Say to the Lord of the harvest. No, Rafa, stop. Stop. Don't do that. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Okay, so Matthew 9, 3, 8. Three, no, Matthew 9, 38. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, 
therefore to send out workers into his harvest. Did you do the Toto? Oh, you did. Oh, man. That's a stinky toot. That is some... Fa oh, that was sweetie. Sweetie. That's a... Not very bitty, but that's a stinky toot. Careful, Toto. Careful. Okay, I just think that's interesting because, and then John, it says, do you not say there are still four months until harvest? I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are ripe for harvest. Now, clearly Jesus is speaking spiritually here. He's not talking about actually farmers going out into the field. He's saying spiritually like their souls ready to I sincerely believe this is talking about like they're at that point where you know the valley decision they could give their hearts and their lives to God um but I also think I also had this thought I don't know about, not too long ago about you know the world has the grim reaper like he has a, a reaping sickle well think about this just like how the enemy paints this silly character of the devil or himself in the world like the devil isn't some halloween costume someone in red pajamas with a pitchfork and horns he I mean, he's happy whatever false thing you believe about him. If he's that, or hey, hey, stop it. But you have to understand the word of God talks about Lucifer before he fell. He was like the most beautiful angel, and his name, Lucifer, then meant light bearer. And the word talks about how his ministers like the enemy his ministers tra they transform themselves into like ministers of light they they're not going to come across as like hey we're devil worshippers over here no they're they're gonna sell you and feed you doctrines of demons in things that sound good i.e like self-love and um yoga don't you just want to relax and lower your stress levels and be more calm when most people don't understand i'll put the link in the description box if you have not seen it yet and you've heard me talk about it before watch it it's an amazing documentary by a sister in the lord who is with the lord now who was um a former a former model in the 70s i believe and she became a Christian and she was into New Age and then once she became a Christian her whole, God changed her whole life and she decided to become this awesome filmmaker like she made a whole bunch of wonderful documentaries and I'm so interested like my husband's a filmmaker too and I, I don't know if Ralphie's seen that one yet but I'd love to watch that on one of our date days but it talks about the new age thus is called gods of the new age but it's so fascinating and it's an example of one of the many pleasure ways that enemy transforms himself into an angel of light to sell a world view an ideology sorry for the chaos behind me what was i gonna i don't even know what i was gonna look up oh i know i was gonna look up Something about Jesus. Let's see if we can find the verse I remember. Um, we'll keep quoting it. Ah, here it is, y'all. I remember from Mickey Wilk. David Wilkerson. The, the sweetie Wilkie Wilker Wilkerson. I'm very sentimental, y'all, too. <laughs> and give. Nicknames, real or loved ones, friends, family. 
they very normal for me. My puppies have nicknames with their nicknames. Okay, um, I remember a sermon he did, and he was repeating this verse, and it really just stood out to me, which is, then I looked, well, I'll do the King James Word. I'll read a couple different versions so you can get a flavor of it. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Okay, so we know too. And I heard a voice from heaven telling me to write, Blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord. Now remember the two deaths, right? There's two deaths the word of God talks about. There's the first death and the second death. And this is saying, blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord. From this moment on, yes, yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors. So when Joel Osteen says your best life now as a professing Christian, he lied because what does this say? They will rest from their labors for their deeds will follow them. Um, last time I checked, go look at a woman when she's in labor and it's not not necessarily a fun event it's very painful and agonizing and yeah so as Christians like when Jesus talks about pick up your cross crosses aren't fun either Joel Olsen and Jesus says pick up that cross and follow me that's not your best life now your best life comes as a believer it comes afterwards for what does it say after for their deeds will follow them and then it says and i looked and saw a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like the son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand hmm what's he gonna do with the sickle i wonder then another angel came out of the temple crying out in a loud voice to the one seated on the cloud, swing your sickle and reap. Ooh, there's that word, reap. Now, is it possible that when you see all this shenanigans stuff about like the Grim Reaper, what if the Grim Reaper is not actually grim? What if for so many number of thousands of years that the this world has existed because abolitionists have lied to you about that. He has been uh, not the Grim Reaper, but actually loving us so much. The author and finisher. Yeah, he's the finisher. He's the author and finisher of our life, but he has given us uh, himself he's died as a sacrificial lamb and his arms are outstretched saying come to me so you so you don't face the second death because the truth is even for the believer the ch true child of God all of us the word says we're each appointed to die once and then the judgment and then it talks about like there's this set the word talks about the second death so I also think about that, like, the rapture, if you're pre, post-trib, mid-trib, I am post-trib, actually. Daddy said right now he's mid-trib, and I think, for sure, right now, Ralphie is, uh, he's pre-trib. He actually got me to switch over to post, when he was post, and then he and I did, like, flip-flops. We change positions both of us <laughs> but god will show all of us the most important thing y'all brothers and sisters in the lord who are gonna have one of these views or maybe you're even a preterist god in time he is going to if we are still here uh during any of these mentioned or if we're rapture however it's gonna all unfold it is going to happen some way or another, and we all will find out. But while we're going through that, however this unfolds, 
Brothers and sisters in the Lord, don't allow the enemy to cause division and um, form these like little clans of like, we're pre-trib, we're post-trib, we're preterists, we're, we're Baptists, we're Pentecostal. You all have to understand that Satan, he divides and that's how he conquers. And a dismembered body of Christ is not going to be this warrior David soldier hero because when everyone's so puffed up and they think they're right and they have the answer over here, the enemy wins and he's laughing like all the way to the bank, so to speak, okay? He will tremble when, yes, I'm biased, I'll say it, when we're still here during the tribulation and Christians aren't fighting over doctrine anymore because they're in danger of having their heads taken off their bodies or there's no food and there's like all these ter terrible calamities. Christians at that point, they're not going to be fighting over doctrine. They're going to be loving each other. And if you're pre-trib and you're like, well, we don't have to worry about that. We'll be raptured. If that's true, praise God. But if that is true, if you're right, then all the more get along with your brothers and sisters and bear with one of them. Bear with one another in love. Be gracious to one another. The word of God says, consider the other like better than yourself. Do you see that in Christ Christendom right now online? No. Everyone is tooting their own horn and everyone's like, I'm in this camp. I'm, you know, it's very hard to find Christians that it's very rare. It's not impossible. I have seen it. But to find Christians that are really loving, loving on each other and they're maintaining fellowship, even if they believe completely different eschatology. Have you guys noticed, like, that's why you have denominations, even, like, with the Baptists, with Pentecostal and all the other denominations, is because they want people that hold to those views. But that's not the body of Christ. And I'm not talking about ecumenicalism. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We are meant to minister to each other. Where one is weak, the other is strong. And we're supposed to, in a different vein, just like how husband and wife, a man and a woman, how God created marriage, you're meant to complement each other. You're meant to um, be like this perfect completion. Well, the body is like that. And the enemy is so happy right now because they're not going to be able to walk in that full God-given power and authority and force when they're all um, fractured like that and dismembered because they they are in violation of when God's saying that we are supposed to be together. We're not supposed to be in all these different denominations. We're, and we're supposed to consider the other better than ourselves and love on each other and bear with one, one another in grace. And do you think that's happening? No, that didn't happen. And that's why you have all these denominations. It's because they're, they're like, nope, we're, we're not going to... See, if you, if you just focus on Jesus, then you're all good. I, the best churches we went to were home churches that were like 50-50, 50% Baptist, 50% Pentecostal. And they were, everyone was so different, but we brought out the best in each other. And yes, when you're having home church like that, like different ones are going to share different views. But when... Let's say you feel so strongly about something. Y'all can still share your opinion in love and then leave it there with the Lord. And if you feel so strongly there in air, pray for them. I know certain things, definitely, we have to call out. We cannot tolerate. Can't condone someone in LGB, blah, 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 because you're not helping someone be set free and no deliverance in Jesus. You're telling them a lie. That's not how God made us as human beings. Or um, if people are saying like there's another way to get to salvation apart from Jesus. Well, okay. Th there are certain hills to die on. And those are things worthy of saying we can't come in agreement with that. But as far as like, you know what I'm talking about, secondary doctrine. Those things I think it's very sad and heartbreaking what's happening in the true body of Christ because I think I think they're about to get their butts 
thanked royally by God for not bearing with one another in love and going into all these different denominations um, because I don't think that's what God wants and I'll just leave it there and in my family I like we have, we have family from all the different denominations too so anyways back to what I was talking about like the you guys know growing up as a kid like seeing movies or hearing about the grim reaper i think that's where they're getting this from but they're jesus is not like those morbid demonic grim reaper but he is a god he as much as he is a god of love and justice and mercy he is also a god of righteousness and justice and there will be a time that he's literally like this verse then another angel came out of the temple crying out in a loud voice to the one seated on the cloud, which is Jesus, swing your sickle and reap. I believe that's Jesus. Anyways. Because the time has come to, the, to harvest for the crop of the earth is ripe. That has to be Jesus. And I looked and I saw a white cloud. And seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man with a golden crown. Uh, yes, says the Spirit. And they will rest from their labors for their deeds will follow them. The harvest of the earth is the heading. And if you guys think, oh, God is so mean. If, he, if he's going to harvest the earth, he has a sharp sickle and he's going to bring all this stuff. Okay, it's the same thing with Noah's Ark. You can't, because you know innocent babies died in that flood of Noah's. It was not a local flood, it was a white world flood. flood. But you can't, atheists will say, oh, like, he's God is such a tyrant, look what he did. Uh, hello, for, was it nearly almost a hundred years Noah was building that ark? I don't know if it was 55 years, 100 years, he was building that thing. As they're holding their babies, as they're pregnant holding their bellies, they're walking with their family. At any time, those families could have said, so to speak, and let's, there is something, there is truth to what this is saying. He fears God Almighty, and I rather fear God Almighty with him than everything he come upon us let's build this ark and get on it that didn't happen so just remember what are you doing getting into trouble uh just remember picture this in your mind the families are drowning in this terrible terrible tragic flood that flood the earth many thousands hundreds of thousands of Okay, and before you're so quick to say, oh, God's this evil monster who wants to murder everyone. No. He provided a way of escape. So when those atheists will come and say that, or let's say those people, I believe those infants, I believe they're in heaven. I, I believe they were before the age of accountability and they weren't raised by their evil parents so they were, their minds and their hearts weren't defiled and that's just what I believe because just like when it says King David when his child died he said I will go to be with him okay so back it up again when all the, these flood waters are rising and everything and let's say they're cursing God like how can you do this just as they're drowning? And this is the question they need to reconcile in their hearts. And everyone needs to reconcile this. Because this judgment in a different form, it's coming. The scripture is clear. There's going to be another judgment to come. That's why you should read your word. That's why you should fast and pray. You should have the fear of the Lord in your heart. But they will have to wrestle with You cannot blame a holy and righteous God. Noah was proclaiming God's message, which is, I want to save you. Don't mock this. 
Believe what my prophet is saying. I want to save you. I want to give you new life in me. I want to bring healing. I want to be your protection. I want to be your ark of shelter. There's a storm coming. There's a judgment coming. Will you take my hand? I have this life preserver, this life vest, this life jacket. I have a life boat. I have a way to save you. There's a way of escape, but it's only through me. It's, that's the same message is Jesus is the same today yesterday and tomorrow and he's the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father but by him so now that those thousands millions however many souls perished in the flood and they're waiting in hell because hell is actually like the jail cell waiting before um, the lake of fire, and then comes the second death, but the judgment comes first. Okay, so they're waiting in hell, and they'll have this time to think, I pushed away those loving arms of God who is reaching out to me, so I am without excuse. I, I can't say, how can you as I'm drowning with my infants in my arms, how can, how can I blame you when Really, the blame comes back to me because God, they will remember all the times they mocked Noah and Noah. Why don't there, there's this judgment coming? Save yourself, trust in the Lord, get on this lifeboat. You cannot blame God for that, for what you did. You will have to look at yourself in the mirror. For you not telling your children. For you not warning them. There is this judgment coming. Do not be like those who perished. History is repeating itself. But be wise. Be like those eight souls that got on that ark. Jesus is the ark. And only in him can we have protection and refuge. Ultimately for the next life. Right? And I just think that it's um, it's an error to like blame God when really the blame goes back to those parents. They are they were responsible. They were given that. You know how they say like um, I think the Pharisees said like let his blood be on our heads. That that's what those families did to their children and the fathers that were um, given that authority role to lead their families and the mothers who never trained their children with the, with the husbands and wives, never training their children to know and love and fear the Lord. Fear is the beginning of you growing to the next step is when you love the Lord. First you fear the Lord and you understand, oh my gosh, he holds my soul and my breath and my heart beats and every molecule in my body. Like Jesus says, the word says, don't fear him who can kill what? The body, this physical, mortal, flesh body, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hellfire. That's the one you should fear. Okay, so that's my point, is just you can't blame God when God is so merciful that he always sends warnings. He always sends warnings. I even believe this apocalypse, apocalypse this eclipse, <laughs> this eclipse is another um, sign from him to warn us, to seek him while, we, while today is today. Okay, here's another verse I wanted to look up. Okay, here it is. Here it is. We all need to meditate on this. God's righteous judgment. And also they have for Psalm 5, 1 to 10. But this is Romans 2. Romans chapter 2, starting at 4. And we know, and we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, O oh men, others yet you do the same things do you think you will escape god's judgment there's a warning against hypocrisy i i believe like this 
probably would really connect to uh, Book of Jude, where it says they use God's grace as a license to sin. And probably those same men and women who are doing that, they're probably, well, I also know the wheat and tares, they grow together in the church. So they're probably doing the same things that they're, if they're preaching against homosexuality, but they in secret are probably doing it. Or if abortion, they're probably doing it. And they're living completely as hypocrites, or they're just living for money. But yet, they're preaching on, like, God's righteousness, and they don't possess it themselves. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you disregard the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you to repentance? You know what's so important about this too? Because I believe it's going to go on to talk about, the, I think, the day of the Lord. Let's see. We can find it. Yeah. But because of your hard and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each according to his deeds. I think that's so important because there also is a movement now that they will talk about all you have to do. They will quote true scriptures that it's through faith that we are saved, not by works lest anyone shall boast. Absolutely. Amen. All day long. But then they will say like, you don't need to repent. See, I believe repentance, repentance, it, it's not that like repentance saves you, only Jesus saves you. But repentance is a barometer that you understand that Jesus really has saved you and you have true reverence for him and love. And it's your love for him is, is what drives you and compels you to say, I do not want to. I don't want to be the Lord of this on my heart, on my heart's throne. I don't want to be Lord anymore. I want you to be Lord and you to guide my life. And I bow down to you and to your will and let it be done in my life, in all areas of my life. And um, I just think that when, when you really have a heart like that, that's when you have, when you have true repentance because there's another scripture that says that God before tolerated sin, but now he commands everyone to repent. And repent is to agree with God and change directions. Like you were going one way, and now you're going to go God's way, which is the other way. Um, God will repay each one according to his deeds. To those who by perseverance in doing good seek glory honor and immortality he will give eternal life that's the thing it's like only jesus gives us eternal life but we have to you know there's another scripture that says examine yourself whether you be in the faith and there's another scripture that says like work out your your faith or your salvation with fear and trembling like you guys this is a heavy heavy matter i am so passionate about telling everyone or i want to tell everyone do not chosen do not support them do not follow the chosen because whether they're aware of it or not and i'll hold my peace for now about that but i will say this for instance i heard this gal share in this interview oh you know when jesus touched put his hands on mary magdalene and do you guys remember that he, he, she was saying about like when Mary Mag Magdalene still had demons in her and stuff. Why the chosen is blasphemous is because it puts words in Jesus' mouth that he never said. And it, it paints a different Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible. And I can prove it with scripture. For instance, her quoting, for one, she said, you know, she was saying how much she loved the chosen and then she said do you know when jesus did this no what she failed to say was when the actor 
the man, the human being of flesh who is playing Jesus did this. Okay? You guys might say, oh, that's just a small thing. The problem is, like, when Ralphie made his film, he, he and I really admire, we saw the old school Ben-Hur film, and in that film, they, I'm pretty sure it was Ben-Hur, they depicted Jesus in that, but they never showed his face, or somehow it was obscured, like, they would show his hand, Jesus' hand reaching down to the fella, or, like, the sun would be shining in Jesus' face, so you couldn't make it out, like, they would obscure his appearance, his face, on purpose. Because we believe that was out of reverence. Because also, when, and I saw The Passion of the Christ, and I bawled my eyes out, and it was a powerful movie. But I understand, like, when Ralphie and I were talking about it, and our, our brother Sean, Sean, we were saying, like, how, in a sense, though, it's not, they could have still, just like, the filmmakers of that old school Ben-Hur, they didn't show Jesus' face because it's reverencing God because we don't know what he looks like. And then from what we do know, what, he, what it says in scripture, it says that there is nothing like no beauty in him that we should desire him like in the world, like they have GQ people. So what do they do when they make like the chosen and the pa passion of the Christ? It's like they have these GQ type mo model type celebrity actors playing them and then they have they're doing things that it's not honoring to god when fellow that plays jesus in the chosen was in an interview and he was saying how he was praying to the dead for this other film ro role he did the jesus revolution where where he plays lonnie frisbee guy a real life young man then who in Christian circles, they many think, oh, he left homosexuality and all that stuff. But I believe Good Fight Ministries talked about it. And I researched it myself. His former wife said that didn't actually happen. Like, he, he was living that lifestyle unrepentant. And even in the end, like, he did not truly repent of that. And you're not hearing that side of the story. And he also went into all these, like, doctrines of demons. Um, doctrines of demons. Theology type things. That is not good. But, for instance, this actor in The Chosen who's saying in this interview that he was praying to the dead to ask the dead, which y'all know that's called necromancy. That's blasphemous to God. That's witchcraft. That's something God hates. So the actor playing Jesus is doing this thing that's witchcraft that God hates, and he's talking to the dead, kind of asking for his this dead young man's blessing, laying on his grave. Like, that's witchcraft, but so much of the church, they're just sweeping it under the rug. They're not even calling it out for what it is. You guys, we cannot get stars in our eyes and see these people like they're gods when they're not. They have feet of clay, and especially when they're doing wicked things that God hates. That's wrong. Now, back to that other interview where the girl said, oh, and Jesus put his hand on Mary Magdalene when she had demons in her. That is not scriptural. Go look it up yourself. There's not one time in scripture where Jesus ever, not even one time, where he ever laid hands on someone who was demon possessed. Why? Because he says, he talks about touch not the unclean. And you know how he says, don't clean the outside. You have to clean the inside first because he did touch leopards, which in the physical realm, they would say, oh, back then, oh, unclean, unclean. They would have to yell, unclean. But Jesus, our Savior, touched them to make a point. It's not this physical disease. It's the spiritual disease. That's why he never touched a demon-possessed person. He never put his hands on them. He delivered them with a word. 
and those demons had they were shrieking and they had to obey they like they knew he is lord and they are terrified of him but they also go look it up yourself he never one time touched a demon possessed person laying his hands on them no he only he cast them out those demons out with a word and then when that person was cleansed from the inside out then he would touch them and do you see how subtle it is so all these christians are watching the chosen and they're they don't realize that they it's a form of brainwashing but it's very subtle just like she didn't stop to say oh the actor who plays jesus no she just said when jesus laid his hands on her when do you understand how powerful that is and you're not even catching it. You're not even seeing what's really happening. Then that same actor is ending up playing. Go research. Go look. Try to find that interview. I'll try to see if I can find an interview on that. On the truth about the actor who played the supposed professed Christian who is in homosexuality and basically leaving his wife for that did not truly repent and then they're glorifying him in this film and they're not telling the truth about what really happened is very sad and and then they have the same actor who is playing jesus in the chosen to play this other actor person who's like connected with homosexuality and stuff you guys don't like that doesn't bother you at all in your heart and not just that he's practicing necromancy which is witchcraft which is blasphemy there there's so many things oh and i i just watched something and it was saying that there was also a scene in the chosen i have not i don't I don't watch The Chosen. I just hear about this from other Christian channels. But they they have their receipts. Like, they show the clips of it and the direct quotes. The, so, the other thing they said is there was another scene from The Chosen where um, Jesus' character, the person playing Jesus, was, like, second-guessing what he was going to say and he was going to rephrase his speech or something because he had feedback from one of the apostles like who was giving him counsel you know he's only god well the person playing him he's supposed to be portraying only god almighty who has you know he's god's son and he's he he's god you know he doesn't need to ask for help from the apostles or the disciples to make his talks better he says everything perfectly and this is why, like, this should never even be. The only thing I think that I feel like is okay is I've seen other, like, the Gospel of John and other things where it's just straight. They have actors, and they have actors that don't look like GQ models. They just, like, look like more normal people, just like that scripture says, nothing. There wasn't anything like the world would desire them to be like a celebrity. Um, but even that, I would still even feel even better if when they showed that actor, like they would obscure his face somehow if it was in shadow. So, so you're not connecting like a physical image to, oh, that's Jesus, right? I So when Ralphie made his film, he on purpose, after we saw like the Ben-Hur from back in the day, on purpose, you will notice this. If you see the Ark in the Darkness, Jesus' face is always like obscured. Either it's very, very dark, or it's he's seeing a silhouette from behind, or he's walking away. Like it that was intentional, y'all. So you don't get this imprint of this false Jesus that we as men and women are just, oh, we think it's like this. We need to be very careful and we should be having reverence like we have lost as a culture we've lost reverence so much reverence okay let's go back 
to first place oh. <gasps> yeah oh my goodness y'all <laughs> am i finished with this i just glanced at the time already <laughs> but because of your hard an unrepentant heart you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of wrath so the day of wrath um that's think about this y'all for those that say you know maybe you've heard them they'll say oh like all you have to do is just believe just believe in jesus or we're just saved through faith which is true lest anyone will boast but when they say that, and then they say, like, you don't even have to repent. You repent out of love. And if you've truly been born again, you, God gives you, it says, like, I think it's Ezekiel or Isaiah. He gives you a new heart. He takes out your heart of stone, which goes after all these idols. And he gives you a heart of flesh that has a new heartbeat that beats for different things. So it's not like, oh no, I need to repent. It's, I want to repent because I love God. I love you so much. Like, I want to give you everything. But anyways, back to this when It talks about, uh, in Romans 2, the day of wrath. But because you're unrepented heart, okay? This is talking about repentance. Your unrepentant heart is talking about repentance and it's talking about God's judgment, his final judgment that will be revealed. Just go back and read that, Romans 2. But because of your hard and unrepentant heart, to all those who say you don't have to repent, this is God speaking, okay? You are storing up what? Wrath against yourself for the day of wrath. There, so... That's why you don't want that to happen to you. You want to be born again. You want God to give you a new heart that is not unrepented, but that's repent. That's re what do you, do you say? Repenting? Repented? <laughs> um, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed, God will repay each one according to his deeds. That's the other thing. I believe Paul talks about, like, anything we do, anything good in us, it's God's Holy Spirit in us to that moves us, that he gets all the credit. He's, if we're born again, he's alive and active in our life. And the Word of God says he will finish what he starts, you know? Oh, I just swallowed dog hair. <laughs> That's what four golden retrievers will do to you. To those who persevere in doing good, seek glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. That's so important to note because not everyone has eternal life, not not even the lost. Like that's actually a God God given mercy. That's why I wonder if, in the end times, if Satan is going to, through Antichrist, offer some type of eternal life. Because it says right here, to those who, by perseverance in doing good, seek glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. What's the opposite of that? Well, if you don't have eternal life, you have what? Eternal death, right? But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow wickedness, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. First to the Jew. So this is not just concerning Jewish people. This is all humanity. Then to the Greek, which is the Gentile, right? All humanity this is including. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. First to the Jew, then to the Greek. For God does not show favoritism. You know how you know he doesn't show favoritism too? Because go back to the Garden of Eden and ask yourself, was Adam and Eve Jewish or were they Gentile? Hmm. You know what the answer is? Both. 
because we all come from Adam and Eve. And hence this verse, for God does not show favoritism. And there's another verse that says, like, there in, in God, like, there is no male or female, um, slave or... It's concerning with that. I don't know the address of that verse, but... I would like to. That's another rabbit trail. I'm just saying that God in God, there is no Jew or Gentile, um, free or slave, male or female. Like once his kingdom comes, like we were adopted into his family and it's like going back to the Eden in a sense. And we all are coming from Adam and Eve, ultimately. Because it's the same line that would have like branched out from Noah, it's the Adam and Eve line, right? All who sin apart from the law will also perish. That's also why it says like all in Adam have sinned, like we are born into that and then we willingly do that, like uh, when we reach the age of accountability, like we are having knowledge of our sin. And I don't know if scripture, I don't know if there's like what that age is i think for the lord knows each individual child when they're passing from child to adulthood um coming of age but there is a verse that talks about when he knows to refuse the bad and choose the good that there's a verse like that in scripture but all who sin apart from the law oh yeah and that's the other thing in jesus so in adam we all have death is brought into the world but it through jesus the second adam that's why we must be born again spiritually um god he gives us eternal life through christ being the second adam okay all who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law for it is not the hearers Y'all, all those who be, who are like grace, 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 but it's like, it's not the true grace of the Bible because you have to preach the whole word. You have to read the whole entire Bible. You can't just say grace and stay in your sin. You, you have to let Jesus give you a new heart. You have to turn away from your old life. You have to say, Lord, you be the Lord of my heart, King of my heart. And that's why this is talking about a judgment and an unrepented heart. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. But it is the doers of the law. And that's the other thing, you guys. Before Jesus gives us a new heart. See, if we in our flesh try to keep the law, we can't. The law breaks everyone, broken, squat, splat, <laughs> toasted. But when Jesus gives us a new heart, it's, it's our love for him that allows us to say no to the simple things in the world. And that's how we can have the victory. It's Christ in us to, o to overcome, to will and to do. It's not, nothing in us that we can boast. It's literally all Jesus. When we do the right thing, it's Jesus. And that's why it says, like, keep in step with the Spirit. We want to align ourselves with Him. See, before we come to Christ, like, we're just living in the flesh. But when we come to Christ and we're born again, He gives us His Spirit. And when we defer to Him, that's when He has the victory and... We will go, we'll walk in those good works that he planned before the foundation of this earth. Okay, for it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but it is the doers of the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature what the law requires, they are Law, they are a law unto themselves, even though they do not have the law. So they show that the work of the law is written on their hearts. Remember, 
it says up here like your unrepentant heart everything goes back to the heart and that's why too we need God to give us a new heart his heart but this is saying like God writes see God writes like his law in our hearts about like it's wrong to murder it's wrong to rape it's wrong go through that list okay there's a time where it's like we're sensitive to these things and we're like yeah that is wrong and we feel bad about it but as we go through life and culture we are brainwashed indoctrinated and our conscience becomes seared like oh like is it, it's not a sin to fornicate it's not a sin to choose your gender it's not a sin to be homosexual even though god says clearly it's a sin and he wants you to live out the life that he has for you not what the enemy tells you through all these doctrines of demons through psychology and the media and so, you guys he has a the enemy has a way to serve you these things you're just not recognizing is coming through all these pores of your life through education through entertainment through media but God gives us his word that does not change and he made us he made the fabric of our being everything so indeed when the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature what the law requires they are a law unto themselves even though they do not have the law so they show that the work of the law is written on their hearts that's what I was saying their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts either accusing them or defending them on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Christ Jesus as proclaimed by my gospel I think that's so interesting that it says God will judge men's secrets because there are some people like they will pass away and they may have been total complete hypocrites and they may have been fooling everyone this side of heaven this side of hell and heaven and we won't know until we get to the other side Ooh, they were a big Pharisee hypocrisy living a double life and this connects to, I think, when this verse says, when God will judge men's secrets through Christ Jesus. Um, also remember, Jesus says that there is a narrow way and there's a broad way. And the point I don't hear many speaking about is he says, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah and Lord says, you few there be that find it let that burn in your heart and your soul and let that uh put a fire in you to want to share your faith with others and warn them like if you really care about others you will want them to know that so they can get right with god before it's too late because one day it'll be too late one day i believe how many of the 150 people die every minute you know me I'm only I'm only quoting death stats because it matters souls right now are dropping right now are dropping into hell as you've been listening to this talk souls are exiting their body and they are entering hell awaiting the second judgment and it's too late for them and their family members are bawling they're hysterical they're just getting news that this loved one had was in a terrible car accident ow <laughs> puppies with sharp paws walking on me <laughs> um their loved one were were just their life was ended they're in a car accident they're not on this earth anymore or they've just had a heart attack or they're just dying before their eyes through having cancer or they're they've been murdered there's so many ways to die well and people people don't stop to think about their afterlife they don't stop to think about their creator they don't stop to think about even if they're worried 
or their whole life is concerned about making money, they don't stop to think about their soul, which is more valuable than the richest of the, the most luxurious things in this world. It does not matter in light of eternity and afterlife. Okay. Now, now, now. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those in darkness, an instructor of those, of the foolish teacher of infants, because you have in the law, the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? Oh, hey, no, no Jojo. Oh, sweetie. It's always sweetie. I'm always mistaking you for Jojo. Jojo, sneak up. Sweetie, bless you. Okay. You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is, blasph is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. You know what I think of that? I think of Rabbi Zacharias when I read this. God's name was blasphemed because of his hypocrisy and double life and wickedness. And this other verse above here, on that day God will judge the secrets, men's secrets through Christ Jesus. Circumcision has value if you observe the law, but if you break the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. If a man who is not circumcised keeps the requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? The one who is physically uncircumcised yet keeps the law will condemn you, who, even though you have a written code and circumcision are a lawbreaker. Here is y'all, a man is not a Jew because he is one outwardly no, nor is nor is circumcision only outward and physical. No, a man is a Jew because he is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart and by the spirit. So God, right here, is like He's making a point to tell us like true Jews, true children of God who are Jews in Christ, a man is not a Jew because he's one outwardly because Jesus was a Jew and to be adopted into his family, to become children of God and have a new identity. Um, it's just like Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again because look what it says right here. He uh, a man is not a Jew because he is one outwardly. No. Nor, I added the no, but for emphasis. Here, here's what it directly says. Nor is circumcision only outwardly and physically. No. That's actually there. No. A man is a Jew because he is one inwardly and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit not by the written code. Such a man's praise does not come from men, but God, but from God. Such a man's praise does not come from men, but from God. Okay. 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 Okie dokie, Smokey. Who used to say that? Was that Amanda? One of my dear besties. Um... I'm definitely going to wrap it up now. Okay. <laughs> so, the saga continues. This was another 
This rabbit trail was brought to you by um, Raffy Puffy and Ruthie Toothy and Sweetie Blessa and Toto Polly. Toto Polly because just like his daddy pup, Ruffy, Horatio Zacchaeus, Ruffy was a runt, and Zacchaeus in the Bible says he was short of short statue, and then Toto was a runt, and he um, got the nickname Toto, and it just stuck, and that's another story, but his middle name is Paul. Because in the Bible, Paul means, Paul went from his name being Saul to Paul, and Paul actually means small. So he was taking that name as a form of humility and like small. <laughs> like I'm, Christ must increase and I must decrease. So that's why we named Tojo Polly. His middle name is Polly because he's small, just he was a runt, just like his daddy. So. Okay, y'all, I am... I'm determined to get through <laughs> my notes. So yet again, this will carry on to another welcome to Rachel's brain. <laughs> uh, and wherever the Holy Spirit leads us, we will flow in that direction. <laughs> okay, I'll just say a little prayer before I go. Father, Father in heaven, thank you, Jesus. You are so awesome. You are so good. You are so worthy of all praise and adoration. We just love you, and I thank you, Lord, for this time with you that I've gotten to do this awesome Bible study and look up all these exciting things and scriptures, and I just pray, Lord God, that you would plant seeds and you would bring deliverance and healing to anyone listening in their in their life, any trial they're going through or tribulation, Lord, that they would seek you if they're anxious, if they're heartbroken, that they would seek you, Lord. You are Abba, Father, healing, lover of our souls, Lord, Jehovah Rapha, that healeth you, Lord. I pray that they would know you in that way, intimately in their heart and their spirit. And when they see this world getting so dark, Lord God, that they would fix their eyes on you, just like you say, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, let's fix our eyes on Lord Jesus, the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith, praise you, Jesus, and I just pray for all the denominations, the true children of God that are scattered in this world, brothers and sisters, and all these denominations, not ecumenicalism, but the true body, that when that time comes, Lord, I, I pray even now that they would start to catch wind of that, that we're dismembered and we need to come together and fix our eyes on you and focus on you. And we want to see your power made perfect in weakness in us, Lord. We are weak vessels, but in you, Lord, we can be strong. We can do anything in you, Lord Jesus. And I just pray you will be done with this episode. I love you so much, Jesus. I miss you. And I'm so grateful for your sacrifice. I'm grateful you answered Ralphie's prayer in connection with the eclipse that we asked. And I'm so grateful that Mommy's waiting for us so we can worship you as a family one day in glory. And I am going to cry like a baby <laughs> and I can't wait to hug you and hug mama and for us all to be together even the puppies because I pray I have asked you Lord can they be there with us too and I just believe that just like the, the the woman who was praying for her daughter and she said even the dogs eat the crumbs off the master's table Lord can our puppies be some of those puppies that eat the crumbs under your table Lord <laughs> That was in regards to healing her daughter, and you said, oh, you marveled because she was a Gentile when she said that. She was so humble, and you you delivered her daughter, Lord. You answered the prayer request for that, Be I believe, because she was so humble, and she likened herself to a dog, and you were just showing so much love and care and mercy, and you lovingly 
answered her prayer request and delivered her daughter from the demons. That's why I just think when folks say, oh, there's no support of animals, pets being in heaven, you know, that's it. I just say, well, I know Jesus loves me. This I know. And I come to him with faith like a child. That's how I want to read the word. I want to have faith like a child. And I see there was this beautiful Gentile woman who goes to our Lord and Savior and asks him from her heart the cry of her heart for her daughter and he marveled and he he granted her request and maybe you're right maybe there's not for what you say pets in heaven but what if it's as simple as all we have to do is ask our lord lord you made the capacity in my heart to love these animals so much they are so precious so many times, Lord, you have taught me so many spiritual th truths through these puppies. You've used these puppies just like we prayed to share the gospel many times. When we've gone through drive throughs we've had Ruffy there and the, you know, we'll end up sharing tracks with the drive through workers and they'll be petting Ruffy and all in love with him and he will start a conversation with times when we've not had him there there was one case and the gal she, her whole countenance would change she would not be happy to see you but the second and she'd be having like the worst day ever grumpy grumple box and i can remember lord before i was close to you having those days where just the light in her was out she was not happy and <laughs> hating life was written all over her face and her countenance you brought Ruffy through that drive through and it was like sunbeams, sunshine, and lollipops, and rainbows, and I've never seen such a, oh, wow, Ralphie could tell you, never seen such a dramatic transformation, just like on a different day, the night you bring, any time you would bring Ruffy, she would light up like fireworks, and be like talking baby talk, and so happy to the dog, and puppy oh I have a nugget for him and like like that would just change her whole night and that was an answer to prayer because we we're like Lord even let our pets be used by you to share the gospel and before we moved away from that town we used to live in we were able to give her like a little care package and a little card from Ruffy and share the gospel so y'all just be creative there's so many ways you can share jesus that's another video idea i had is like you guys i can't keep up with all the ideas that i have i have like a list a book full of all these ideas of things that i want to make for the lord and like it does not seem to be enough hours in the day i want to do it all but we're just so busy so with life happenings and renos and house fixing upping and just I hope I get to zone them because I think it's really really helpful okay y'all we love you so so much and thank you again for um coming back to our little corner of the world and we just love you and we pray that you have a wonderful week with the Lord and consider fasting and prayer. I would love I would love to know one day. Because one day I might open the comment section. Just right now I just feel like it's just not on my heart and I'm so swamped with life and <laughs> I can barely keep up with it. Oh, before I forget, um I did want to say Oh, if Brittany and Ryan, Th Ryan Thomas and Brittany Vesser, who I made a video a little bit back, if they ever happen to hear this, I am still praying for you guys. I am still praying for you guys. And you guys are both making videos about you're still going through the divorce and, or you, to go through the divorce, you're embarking on that long process. And Brittany was sharing it could take depending on the choice she makes. And I'm praying you pick the long route, girl, because I want to hear, I want to hear miracles. 
Okay, and some people will be like, Rachel, are you smoking crack? Like, that's not going to happen. Well, they said that about my grandparents, okay? And they were separated for, I don't know if it was two years. I don't know how long. It was a while. And Grandpa, Granddad was already with another, he had left my Nana for a younger woman. He was a raging alcoholic, my mom said. I just heard a lot of trauma and trauma he went through but guess what God ended up saving him and he left that younger woman and the day it was supposed to go to the courts my nana was there to like officially file the divorce to be filed to make it official granddad somehow missed the date and the judge threw it out and the divorce was cancelled and also his boss who was a Christian, my, my grand, granddad, was praying for him. Prayer is so powerful, y'all. If you hear this, and you're a believer, and you heard the video I made for Ryan and Brittany a few months ago, several months ago, pray for them, y'all. Especially if you're considering fasting and praying, like Ralphie and I are fasting and praying right now. And the only reason I shared that was because the other video is because I actually prayed about sharing it and I felt like God said share it to inspire others to fast and pray for their loved ones and things going on in their life I really feel there's a blessing there but if you do that pray with us for this couple this dear couple that the enemy wants to destroy and does not want their marriage to survive but don't say the writings on the wall even if they're saying that even though Ryan has a girlfriend my granddad had a girlfriend and God changed things, y'all. God healed a broken family, a broken man, and a broken woman. And he, he healed them, and he gave them a new marriage. And he healed my mom, and my parents, and Ralphie and I. And he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals me. So he can easily, he can save Ryan and Brittany. He could save their marriage. He can do more than we can imagine. And I just think that, it's never been done before. I don't, I see YouTubers, big influencers divorcing all the time. And I don't ever see other Christians saying, making videos that I'm praying for you. And hey, y'all, let's, let's get the body of Christ together and fast and pray for this massive YouTube couple to God to save their marriage and that their sweet little babies don't have to have their hearts destroyed their children are so precious and so beautiful and divorce destroys kids hearts only god can heal that but why not let god heal that before it gets before it actually is official and it's those babies those children they are half their mother and father and that is so damaging and destroying so if you're a child of god and you're hearing this and you haven't watched that video i made about Ryan and Brittany, go try to watch it. It's a several videos back. And if you feel so inclined, join us in fasting and praying for this dear couple that God would manifest himself in their in each of their lives and that God would bring them both to the end of themselves. And truthfully, when I look at both of them because they've made more videos, I, I completely see that they look so broken and especially ryan he he looks like he's been kind of dragged through dragged through it and i just think that uh, that's another video i want to actually make another video about that and about saying i'm praying for them and y'all even if they don't get back together and they do go their separate ways I would still want to pray for them that they would get saved, that they would come to saving faith in Jesus. But y'all, I'm telling you, I truly believe in my heart, in my heart, that God placed them in my heart to pray for them. And I want to pray for them for miracles. I want to pray that that's the other thing. I would not have the boldness to pray for God to save their marriage, even though they're in the midst of divorce. If I had not had the 
the legacy in my own family of that being overturned multiple times and God healing multiple broken marriages that could have ended in divorce that were like in the same boat y'all so I I just I have to believe for miracles because I've witnessed it. That's my family's heritage. And i that's the God we serve. He's the God of miracles. Don't you want to believe in a God like that? Do you want to believe in a God that is that can't do miracles, that can't bring broken families together, that can't raise the dead and make spiritual life in a broken, dead body? God can do the impossible. So... Anyways, oh, and I keep forgetting the last thing I want to say. If y'all, any loved ones have tried to reach out to me, when Ralphie and I went to the film premiere, basically there was some shenanigans with my email, and I don't have that email anymore. So if any loved ones trying to reach out to us, um, you would either have to have Ralph's email or try to contact us another way. I do... I do have a new email, so if you're a loved one, hopefully you get that, and if you're trying to reach us, just don't use that old email. Anyway, so yeah, that that's something I just wanted to make note of. I love you guys so much, and I am so excited, I'm, I'm so excited, you guys, I even though I know the, the eclipse was like so heavy. And I, I was like, I was weeping today because today, even though this is another video, I'm recording them in the same day. I have so many things to share, you guys. <laughs> I'm not even done yet. Um, but I, I'm just excited because I feel, I just feel God's presence and I feel like he's going to be doing so much so many more much greater things than we can imagine to come like i do think absolutely the world is it's going to get darker and it's going to get harder you guys but i believe that in as you see things go down that way i believe the true children of god they're going to be going up like they're going to be drawn closer dependency upon Christ and they're going to have more fellowship with him and they're going to have more fellowship with each other like they're going to start to detach from the world more and they're going to be hungry more and therefore like when I was in Africa I remember we have prayer meetings sometimes like all night and God was just moving so powerfully all I'm getting at is like the more Angus said this he was talking about, he did ministry in Africa too, and if you haven't seen Faith Like Potatoes, go see that movie, it's a true story and it's amazing, but he was sharing how they were doing outreaches in, in the bush in Africa, and they had this truck that said Jesus on the side, and um, they would go places where they had no Bibles, because he said in North America, they have Bibles with like two inches of dust sitting on the shelf, they don't even open them. And there's other parts, other nations where children of God, they are risking their life to own a Bible. And they have to go underground and have church underground and fellowship and worship the Lord underground. And we here in North America, we have this glorious word. And yet, in so many homes, it's sitting in dust while people are watching Netflix or playing video games or looking at pornography. And lives right now are dropping into hell. So I'm just excited because I am seeing God start to move. And He's, I think he's starting to wake to the true children of God to the lateness of the hour. And why we need to get in our word. Why we need to get in our prayer closet. And why we need to fast and pray. Because we need to love others more than ourselves. We need to love others more than entertainment. And these paul talks about it we wrestle not against flesh and blood so us praying for Brittany and ryan do you think Brittany and ryan are wrestling against flesh and blood no they may think that in their flesh they may think oh my goodness my spouse 
who I'm estranged from is the enemy, but no, 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 no. They're not the enemy. There's a, there is a war going on that's above them, that's influencing them, that wants to kill, steal, and destroy the, the life, the childhood of their children, their own peace, their family. They, he wants to take everything from them. And God comes to give life and to heal. So pray for them. Pray that they can know. If you're a true child of God, and you know what God has healed you from, why not Why not pray for someone else's family that, especially if you've gone through divorce and you've later become a Christian and you know how much he had to heal your heart, why not stand in the gap for them? Why not intercede? Ask God to give you, ask God to give you that heart for the loss. God says, my house will be a house of prayer. I just think that's so powerful and that's important. We need to take that to heart. So I hope some of y'all join us in fasting and prayer. Okay, you guys, I could just go on and on and on and on. And on. Okay, I love you. I love you so much. God bless you all. And if you don't know Jesus, I pray that the day will come soon that you will that you will become a, a new creation in Jesus Christ and that you will be adopted into this family and you will experience a new reality. Okay, bye y'all. We love you. Bye. Through the locks, the waves begin to sing.